Hello. Okay. I want to tell you about a great project that I and about like 30 of other friends were involved in, so it's not just me. Uh, how to build a monorail, because I wanted to talk about something that has absolutely nothing to do with technology here, because we should all do other interesting things. So it has nothing to do with technology except for all the Arduino. <laughs> so I go for a thing called Burning Man. It is great. It has a theme every year. Uh, in 2010, the theme was Metropolis. So what does every modern metropolis have as a transportation of the future? The <laughs> Monorail. So just like Seattle or Sydney, which goes nowhere to nowhere, or Seattle, uh, transportation of the future in 1962, and all the other cities that are definitely on the map. What is it called? Monorail. So if you're going to design a monorail, where is the best place to go? Of course, you go to Wikipedia. And of course, the first thing you find, you go, oh crap, I want one of those, is a gyroscopically balanced monorail. <laughs> okay. So what you discover then is like that's hilarious because you run out of power and it leaves the sides and falls over. So instead, because most of the people lived in Seattle, we went for the Seattle design. Uh, and there's a guy that's actually built one in his backyard. So there's the URL for that. And it looks a bit like this. So it's out of wood and it goes around the backyard and it's really cool. <laughs> Travel there, pass the train. <laughs> if you laugh, I won't finish. <laughs> And then what we do is they had a big curve in there, and the problem with going around the corner was it was actually took them five years to get that design and manufacture right, so we decided to go on a straight line. So what did you do? Well, we started having SketchUps of how it's going to look and have people there, not to scale, or oh, cool looking car. And there's engineers involved, so there's like proper diagrams of how everything's going to be built for the stations and everything. But where do monorails go? Anyone who's been to Seattle or Sydney or the other cities that have one, uh, they go nowhere to nowhere, stopping nowhere in between. So this is an aerial photo of Burning Man. You have the man there, which is a big point, and then you have the temple there. It's a big point. We wanted to put it there, across there, going to nowhere to nowhere. Uh, the people who built the temple said that would be really annoying and would piss them off, so instead we had to build it that way, so it almost went somewhere down it. Anyway, <laughs> what do you do for building material? Well, of course, metal is excellent. It has very predictable stress qualities, so you're not going to kill people, because apparently that's bad. Uh, but wood is cheap. <laughs> wood used for structural purposes is expensive, so the stuff that make you use to build your house, that costs money. So use cheap, shitty wood. Downside, wood is a composite. So this has a whole bunch of different properties than metal. So it's essentially, we may as well be making it out of carbon fiber. So how do we solve this? Let's use math. So of course, the benefit of having engineers, including structural, like aer aerospace and the like, is we could do a whole bunch of maths on like wood properties and how this will fit together and what, wind, uh, what loads would be under various winds and people leaning out the side and doing all sorts of silly things. And we had a whole bunch of fun with, of course, this calculation is dodgy. <laughs> So it was absolutely perfect to make sure that anyone killing themselves would be their own damn fault and not ours. So testing, what do you do? Uh, have 600 pounds of vertical load test, drinking a beer right underneath it because safety third. <laughs> so full vertical load test, of course we did torsion tests and we modified the design and hanging stuff all there. You would need one metric hot tub full of water because that's where you get 600 pounds of weight for free. Don't drink it, it's disgusting. Uh, <laughs> It's going to be eight foot high, 500 feet off the ground. It required about as much wood it takes to build a house. Of course, you need a car to go along the monorail, some wheels on top, some wheels to the sides to balance it, and some cool stuff on the side to make it look cool. It takes two people. You have stations. They kind of have sides, look a bit like a city, with a whole bunch of like uh, about 14 or 20 watts of LED lights each with Arduinos controlling the colors between them was really cool, which of course requires a bunch of wire, a bunch of soldering, putting wires together, and then you need to light up the track so at night people don't uh, ride into it, drive their cars through it, or ride their bikes and cut their head off. Uh, so you need 540 watts of LED rope light. <laughs> so how do you do construction? Well, you get a week before Burning Man, you start constructing two sections of track, then you build more sections of track, start putting a scaffolding up for the uh, uh, stations, and then put you know, warning things in there to have people stop killing themselves, check the car, make sure everything's going on, get a forklift, put it up on top, screw everything together, cross brace it so everything's going to stay properly, put the metal shiny stuff on the side so it like burns your eyes in the middle of the day, uh, and then discover that you didn't have anyone who knows how to build an electric car, um, because that turns out to be hard and have whole sorts of propulsion troubles and need a ladder to get on and off it and all that kind of thing. But then it's really cool because you invent a new unit of measurement, which is mono uh, monorail unit, because we're in America, so therefore it's like imperial. Uh, you have the stations in the daylight, which look really cool. It got tagged, which was excellent. It looked lit up at night, and it was great. You could see your artwork from miles and miles and miles around, uh, which is excellent. This is the only photo I could find of it moving. Uh, there was great rumors of why it wasn't moving at various times. Favorite ones involved, it shut down because somebody died. Ha ha. Uh, and, of course, at the end, we burnt it. <laughs> the small amount of source code is, of course, on the internet, which is actually branched off the Groovix cube. Uh, also, stuff you should do is totally develop your own film, because it's great. It doesn't involve bloody computers that don't work, or software that doesn't work. Brew your own beer, because it is absolutely delicious. And definitely, if you can't change your life, at least change your socks. Uh, and I swear never to make art again.